In this video, I want to show you how you can check if a folder exists in a SharePoint document library or a SharePoint list from inside Power Automate. By the way, if you're trying to do this before you create a folder inside a SharePoint library or list, don't because just using create folder action inside Power Automate will check for you if the folder is there or not, regardless it creates it. If it is there, it doesn't do anything, but it says, hey, I successfully created it and takes the credit for the job that someone else has done before. Regardless, for any reason, if you want to check if the folder already exists inside a SharePoint list or library, this is your video. Let's see how we can do it. This is the library that I want to explore. I want to check if a folder exists in this library. To do that, I have created a Power Automate flow. It's a manually triggered flow and it just accepts one parameter as folder name. You can take it from a variable, from any other input. It doesn't matter where. At the moment, I just get the folder name from the user that directly fires the flow. And there is just compose here. I, I just put a dummy action so that I can save it. The whole idea is that I want to check if a folder exists in this SharePoint library. To do that, I can come here and I need to add an action for SharePoint. Under SharePoint, there is no action that checks for the existence of a folder, but we have something called get items. Just be careful, there is get items and there is get item. Get item picks up an item by unique ID. This is not what you're looking for. We have just a few properties of a certain element in a SharePoint list or library, and we want to get a filter on that. So we use get items. I need a URL of the site. I just copy it, I bring it back here, and I just say enter custom value, and I stick the URL here. Give it a few seconds so it trims everything and picks up all the lists and libraries that they are there. I come here and I click on this drop down, and you see the list name does not exist. The reason that it does not exist is that inside this SharePoint site, I don't have lists, I only have libraries. And I think this is one of the areas that Microsoft needs to do a tiny bit of improvement to include all the lists and libraries when you want to look to get an item, because every library in SharePoint is naturally a list. Because it doesn't pick it up, it doesn't mean that we cannot work with it. Just click on enter custom value, and I just type in documents, and that's it. I may or may not limit the entries to a specific folder. So if you want to see a folder exists in a very specific folder, at the moment we don't want to. Include nested item, we don't care. Now, our key is here to enter the right OData query to filter for the folder that the folder name is what we are looking for here from this trigger. There are two things that we need to look for. First, the folder name. Second, get items picks all the items. We only need folders. Let me just create a dummy file here quickly. So I call it dummy content. Now let me just change the name to dummy file, and we're good, it is saved. Let me just close it. And now we have one file and two folders. So the first step is just to filter the content of this library for only folders. Now, one thing that I always do before I add any filter, especially for every case that I manually enter the list name or library name as a string, I want to run it once and see if it works. So I just save it and test it manually, test, sign into SharePoint, no worries. It doesn't matter what I type at the moment, I'm not checking anything for the folder name. I just want to make sure it connects to the right library and gives me the result. Run, it's green, it's happy, it didn't complain. And if I check the results, you can see actually it got everything that we were looking for. Fantastic, we're happy. I can close this guy and I can continue now with my query. So now that we are at the filter level, we need to filter for everything that is folder. Inside SharePoint, for every content that goes into any list or library, regardless of enabling or not enabling the content type management, every content in a list or library has a content type. The content type, you can see it in this column, but 
typically when you create a list or library, the content type is not there. To enable that, you can simply click on this drop down and say, edit current view. And just make sure you find content type in the list and you check it. As soon as you check it, you will be able to see the content type. But at the moment, it's irrelevant for the way that this solution works. It's only for understanding where I'm getting these OData parameters. And the first one is content type. If I go back to my flow now and I click on edit, under get item, under filter query, I should be able to say content type equals, you guessed it, folder. So I go back here and I say folder. Now, I can save it and test it, but don't keep your hopes high because I just typed in the column name and it has a space in it. Most probably OData doesn't like it. So if I test it and I click on test, run flow, I mean, just put some dummy value here, run flow, done, and it's not happy because it cannot find this combination as a column name. But what is the name for this column that we need to use for filter. And that's the heart of this video. To figure that out, you need to download and install SharePoint Client Browser. If I just look it up on Bing, it takes you directly to the GitHub. And if I click on it, you can download this guy and you can see all the versions that you need. We picked the SharePoint Online version. And if you just expand it, that zip file contains a file called SPCB. And if I just run this guy, you will see a screen like this. It can connect to the site collections and it can give you backstage information that is secretly kept by developers. So I can click on site collections, right click on it, and I say add site. Now it's easy. I can go back to my SharePoint. I can get the URL of the site. And now I can stick this guy here and I click on OK. It's asking me for the username and password, so I click on the one that I want and it logs in to my SharePoint site. So at the moment I have everything here. Now I can click on the site that I have. Let me just expand it. Under the site I have lists. Regardless if it is list or library, it goes under lists. Now under lists, I have documents, I can expand it. And if I click on fields, I can expand it. And let's scroll down and see if we can find content type. And there we go. I have a field called content type. Now if I click on this guy, it tells me, hey, the internal name is content type without space. Yes, we got what we were looking for. I just copy this. And instead of content type with the space that we see in the UI, I can put the internal name that OData can understand. I can click on save. And this time if I test it, I can click on test, run flow, oh gosh, give it a name. And I can click on done and it works. Not only it works, it also returns only folders for me. Let me go to the compose here, sorry. Compose, and instead of this yes, no, I want to put the count of the items that get item returns. So I go to the expression, I say length, and I get it from the get item value. So whatever that it returns, it gives me the count. So now if I just save it and test it again, test another dummy value, run flow, and done. Okay, now if I go to Compose, it shows me only two because we have two folders here. Now, our first filter for content type works. We could filter it for folders only, not the files. Second step is to filter it for the name. So naturally, I come back here. I can click on Edit, expand the Get Items, and I can say and name equals single quote and right in between them, I want to get the folder name from my trigger. So let me just scroll down and see if I can find folder name, bingo. And I can say save. 
And you really think this is the end? Let's see. Test. Ah, oh, gosh. Run flow. Done. Again, flow failed for the same reason. But this time, it complains that name does not exist. Really? I have the name right in front of me. Again, the secret is inside SharePoint Online Client Browser. Let's find the field name. Let's scroll down, 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 down. Ah, gosh. Seriously? Name, 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 name. How many columns are called name? When you are in a situation like this, you need to pick them one by one and check the internal name for it. For this one, it is file leaf name. I can copy this. If you pick the other ones, this one is link file name to menu. Now you see what that one is. That's a value that you have here. This one is a link file name. So the link that actually you click on it, this one link file name to, these are not the things that we want, right? So all we need is just a file leaf reference. I bring it back to my flow, edit, and instead of name, I can put file leaf reference and I can click on save. Now, if I click on test, I can click on test. Let's give it a name, for example, test one, and I click on run flow, done. Bingo, it worked and it shows me zero. While if I pick a name that already exists here, let me just run it again. X folder, and I click on run flow, done. And this time it shows me one, which means the folder exists here. I think I could easily just give you this query and close this chapter, but I think you deserve to know where I'm getting this information from. And for this video, it's all coming from SharePoint Online Client Browser. And that was it. We are done with another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know where the like button is. And if you are not already a subscriber, you may consider pushing that subscribe button so you will not miss the future videos like this. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.